I recently had the opportunity to spend the day visiting basic training at Lackland Air Force Base. Some of you may recall that vivid experience. And part of the visit was going out to the uh, obstacle course that the trainees uh, run and the tear gas chamber. Maybe you recall that. And uh, as they were coming out of the chamber, wiping their eyes, having experienced tear gas without their mask on, the MTI, the training instructor, assembled the trainees. Gather round, gather round. I was standing off to the side. And he did the bit about, do you realize who this is? And uh, they all just looked as they wiped their eyes. And, and he said, this is the fifth chief master sergeant of the Air Force. And one trainee spontaneously, uh, I'm sure without thinking, said, I thought you were dead. <laughs> and of course, the MTI said, you can't say that. And I said, sure he can. I think it's great. Matter of fact, uh, uh, not only am I living, but I am now the senior breathing retired chief mass sergeant of the Air Force. I'm number five. Unfortunately, one, two, three, and four have passed on. Fortunately, we don't have to die in order. Uh, uh, because if we did, that would, uh, that would frighten me. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, number seven and 10 are also deceased. So there are nine of us in retired status. Uh, so we're somewhat of a rare breed. I went to uh, Ramstein Air Base, Germany on a visit, a delightful place to go visit. And while there, they put me in the Airy suite. Uh, as many of you in the Air Force know, Chief Airy was the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. And they put me in the Airy suite. Across the hall was the Gaylor suite, named in my honor. But apparently someone was occupying the suite. So they put me in the Airy suite, which was fine. OK, so I'm checking out three days later. and. Uh, the young lady on the desk, a young civilian lady, she said, Chief, did you enjoy your visit? I said, oh, very much so. I love coming to Germany and Ramstein. I had a great three-day visit. Did you enjoy your suite? Oh, I said, it was most comfortable. Yes, thank you so much. I said, I was a little bit surprised that they didn't put me in the Gaylor suite across the hall. After all, it was named after me. And she said, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when that happens, you know. It, I, really, when you and I get to feeling so arrogant and so pompous, we need to come back down to earth. Uh, uh, someone asked Mr. Lincoln, President Lincoln, uh, what he considered to be the greatest attribute of leadership. And of course, there are so many. Uh, maybe you have your favorite attribute. But I like what President Lincoln said. He said, humility, humility. And then he was quick to add, he said, I'm not talking about acquiescence or passivity or meekness. No, he said, I'm speaking of humility that comes from the confidence that you have in your own talent and ability that you are not threatened by the creative inputs of others. Uh, he said, if a leader feels they have to bluster and throw their weight around, they don't have appropriate humility. And so I think what a great message from a great leader who indicated that although we can be very proud of our achievements, at the same time, we have to make sure that we're grounded and that we're not threatened by the ideas and inputs of others. We've had some great briefings today. Uh, Colonel Preston and uh, Bob Chapman and uh, uh, the general uh, came up here and spoke. General Johns came up and spoke, and I guarantee you uh, that they are not threatened by the ideas of others. They willingly embrace them, support them, and encourage them. So one of the great techniques of leadership is the ability to maintain appropriate humility blended with the pride that they have in their achievement. I, uh, I find that it's rather common in the business world for companies to have a motto, a slogan, if you will, a creed. Uh, some of the more famous, you'll recognize Delta is ready when you are. We're American Airlines doing what we do best. Shop at Sears and save. Have it your way at Burger King. Uh, the military has slogans. I always like the one of the Army. 
be all that you can be. And in the Air Force, of course, today, our slogan is what? Fly, fight, win. I think when you have a slogan, it sort of gives you a direction, a line of march, a, a goal, if you will. And so I want to share with you my motto for life uh, and uh, how I obtained this motto. And if you don't have a motto, if you don't have a personal motto, I'll share it with you. You can make it your motto because I just think it's a great motto. And here's the story. I was invited to speak in Laredo, Texas. It's a border city down on the Mexico border. I live in San Antonio, and I was invited to speak National Association of Banking Women, La Posada Hotel, at the 7.30 engagement. So I drove down from San Antonio and arrived there at 3.30 in the afternoon. And my first question as I checked into the hotel, what am I doing here so early? I could have left San Antonio. Uh, at that time and still have had plenty of time. And so I thought, well, I don't want to sit in the lobby, so I decided to get in my car and sightsee downtown Laredo. Does that sound exciting or doesn't it? And so I'm driving the streets of Laredo, just killing time, and my stomach said, you didn't have lunch. You better get something to eat to tide you over. Amazingly, on a street corner in Laredo was a hamburger stand. Just a stand, not a restaurant, but just a hamburger stand. Parking space, so I pull in, I walk around to the front of the stand, and there's a man behind the counter, could barely turn around, limited space, small grill, a French fried dipper, and uh, what will you have? I'll have one of your burgers. What do you want on it? I guess everything. Uh, and so I watched him as he fixed my order, a very talented uh, chef. And uh, I questioned how many hamburgers had he made over the years. Eventually, he served me. I paid him, I think, $2.85. And um, I, now I'm holding my burger and the soda that I had ordered. And um, I thought, well, now what do I do? If I sit in the car, it's a hot day. That won't be too enjoyable. He had a bit of a canvas awning uh, on the top of his little shack. And so I moved down to the end of the counter to enjoy my burger and I witnessed the most amazing event. His phone rang. He has gone high tech. <laughs> I, bet, I bet when he opened, he didn't have a phone, but he's added that feature. And he began to do considerable writing. And as, when he finished writing, he immediately put six burger patties on the grill. That's all it would hold. And then he put potatoes in the basket down into the oil. And then he spread the buns out, uh, mustard, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, uh, his hands were doing this. A couple of times I wanted to applaud. I felt I was being entertained while he was preparing this order, I, like a bullfight. Uh, bravo, ole, uh, you know, and all of that. Okay, so eventually he gets a uh, white uh, paper type thing, and he begins to wrap each burger. And when he's finished uh, shaking the fries and what have you, he got a big white sack, and he filled the sack with the food that he had prepared. Now he turned and he's right across the counter from me. I almost could have touched him because he was right there in front of me. And as he tucked the sack, he barked a name. And thinking I was the only one there, I did the minute of confusion, like who, who's he talking to? And what would I do if I took the sack? So appreciate the moment of confusion. Out from behind the shack came a small boy. I didn't know he was sitting there. Best I can figure, he was sitting in the shade of the shack on a Coke case. He hands the order to this young kid, this sack, gave him instructions in Spanish, and the kid took off down the street running. Now, I'm talking Olympic class. I'm not talking loping or jogging. Uh, I'm talking starter uh, pistol and starter block. Had you been there, you would have done what I did. Look at that kid. Where is he going? He's running full speed with this sack of food. He went about a block, block and a half, and disappeared. I thought, that's motivation. I'm not sure what generated it. Um, so I finished my burger. You remember, I'm killing time. I'm just taking my time, wipe my mouth, put the napkin down, turn to leave from this shack, and here came the kid running full speed back up to the shack. And when he got there, he did <sighs> any more orders. And the man behind the counter said, in Spanish, no.
I'm bilingual. And um, so now here's the scene. Here's the scene. You got the old chief standing there, and, and uh, you got the kid catching his breath, and the guy behind the counter waiting for the phone to ring. And I thought, I've got to interview this lad. And so I'm prepared to share with you the interview. Uh, hi. <laughs> he went, hi. Uh, what is your name? He said, Juan. Uh, how old are you, Juan? He said, 11. 11. And he, I said, do you work here? He said, every afternoon after school, 3.30 to 5.30. And what would your job be, Juan? He said, I'm delivery service. Uh, where did you take that order? He said, to a drugstore on Salinas Avenue. I said, you were really running. He said, I always do. What a great line. I always do. Every order, yes, sir. Over and back, yes, sir. That fast, yes, sir. I had him set for the big question, didn't I? Why? And this young lad looked at me uh, and sort of cocked his head and said, people like hot french fries. That's what he said. And I said, you're probably right. And I got my car and left, and I went and I gave my talk at La Posada Hotel, and I got my car at 9.30 and started 150 miles San Antonio on a lonely stretch. It's 68 miles to the first village. You have a lot of time to reflect and ponder. How did the day go? How did my talk go? And it suddenly hit me. Juan has found the answer. People like hot french fries. What more do you need? You're now equipped with a motto for life. That's all you have to do. I wanted to turn around. I wanted to go back. Might he still be there? I want to give his name to an Air Force recruiter. I want Juan to marry my granddaughter. I, if we don't send him to college and screw him up, he'll be famous. He'll, he'll have his own jet airplane checking his restaurants in the major cities around America because he knows one thing and one thing only. People like hot french fries. Now, a question for you, a couple of questions. Is that true? And you say, well, sure. When your aunt comes to visit from Buffalo, you don't say, put your luggage down, Bertie, and get in the car. Uh, we're taking you uh, to a place that serves cold, soggy fries. No. <laughs> now the questions get a bit tougher, and here it comes. Uh, do you deliver hot fries? When you provide a service, when you interface with a customer and under whatever condition, when you're parenting your children, whatever you might be doing, you deliver hot fries. You know, there's three great stories here. Very quickly, if we go back to the hamburger stand, first the man behind the counter. You know what leaders do? They set goals. They establish the line of march. They communicate direction. They give the vision to the workforce. That's what good leaders do. They communicate, and they work with the, uh, with the workers, and they make sure that everybody tuned in. And so that's what the guy behind the counter did. He said, Juan, I fix the burgers. I'm good at that. I've been doing it for years. I can't deliver them uh, because I have to stay here in case the phone rings. That's where you come into play, Juan. And so Juan becomes just as important as the chef. Every worker is important. They contribute. They, they make their contribution. Now let's go to the drugstore, and here's the recipient of the bag of food. Let's say it's a lady, and she says, Juan, have you ever noticed that we call you just about every day and order food? And Juan says, yes, I've noticed that. It seems like every day. And she says, do you wonder why? And he said, yeah. She said, because you deliver hot fries. Uh, we've tried other places, and when the food gets here, it's cold and it's not as good. And so we need feedback. You need feedback from your customer. You need to ask your customer, how are we doing? Are we providing good service? I was a cop in the Air Force. I used to ask people, did you sleep good last night? Yes, I was on duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I need that feedback. Did you feel safer when you knew that I was on duty? 
And so we all need feedback, and that's where that customer comes into play. And if they're not given it willingly, solicit it. And number three, we got Juan. We got Juan. He's eating French fries. And you know what? He knows when they're hot, they taste better. And so he practices the, uh, he practices the golden rule. He delivers fries unto others as he would want fries delivered to him. <laughs> and so here it is. It's a simple message, but it's powerful. People like hot French fries. Now, one last point. Have you noticed that nowhere in this picture, nowhere in this story, is any high-tech equipment? There wasn't any blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, iPhones, sea phones. There, there were none of that. There was a guy fixing a sandwich and some French fries and a young kid delivering them and an old chief standing there eating. And so I'm not suggesting we can do away with all the technological gadgetry, but I'm telling you what, there is no substitute for human interaction. There is no substitute for caring. There is no substitute for reaching out. There is no substitute for involving the worker in the planning and the organizing and the activating of the work effort. And that, what a great story. And I'll tell you what, in my travels around uh, the world now, I expect hot fries. I don't want partial treatment. But if I'm dealing with a, an airline or a, a, a rental car and I don't feel I'm getting the right service, I'd say to them, do you know Juan in Laredo? <laughs> and they look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> who? I don't know who you're talking about. And then I say, he delivers hot fries. <laughs> and then I walk away feeling magnanimous, which of course is an officer word. I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> But it's a, a, a great word. A motto for life, one for all of us. People like hot french fries. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>